All right, welcome back to the Flat Track Factory. We're still here at Quarterly Racing with uh, our buddy, Dale Quarterly. Um, Dale, let me ask you uh, something that comes up a lot. Flat Track Racing is ostensibly incredibly simple. The, there's really only two corners. There's one kind of down on one end, a, a straightaway, and there's another oftentimes matching on the other end. Two corners. Why, when you bring, for example, a road racer who can figure out an 18 or 20 turn road course in in a session when they come to flat track will they may they may struggle forever what is it's the same reason if you watch nascar stuff that all the road race guys that are really good in road racing um mark dismore scott pruitt scott goodyear um speed um i don't know the list is endless when they bring them circle track racing those guys never make it. They kill them at the road races, but can't circle track. Mm -hmm. And the biggest reason for it is, and I struggle flat tracking myself, if you see me ride, I definitely struggle, is for 20 years I've been telling myself, don't do that, don't do that, don't do that. And it's something you have to do. Like plowing the front wheel on entrance, but you're plowing it before it even did anything. You just get down there and the handlebars. You, there's no there's no feel involved. You just got to decide, okay, right about here, and stop plowing the front wheel to get it to stop, right? <laughs> and at some point, you decide, okay, this feels good enough, and you straighten it back out. But if you don't crack the gas open at that particular moment, the thing's going to low side you. So you got to time the two just right. And just every single thing you do, yeah, is different than I'm used to doing, right? That's the biggest reason. The second biggest reason is, there's what are you really doing piece that we go out and we ride and we think we're doing one thing and then someone will show us a picture or you'll look at a video and you're yeah. like, holy crap, that's not me. There's no way that's me. I got that thing laid over so far, the handlebars on my boot. When you look at the video, you're like this. <laughs> the only is it's not what's really going on. That's part of it too. And to me, the third piece is um, if you get and I've seen this, if you get the right guy on the right motorcycle with the right instructor, like a Johnny Lewis, and go to the racetrack, and that guy's never ridden before, and Lewis talks him through the pieces he's gonna struggle with and how to address it hmm. and turn that guy loose, within an hour, that guy's competitive. What usually happens, though, is you get a road racer, and he's, or any racer for that matter, is he's going to go try it for the first time. But he doesn't want to get on the good guy's bike. He just wants to get on a bike and try it. So yeah. he's on the wrong bike. So the bike's not set up right, and then he's overriding it because he's riding it wrong. In between the two, it's masking what's really going on. So there's no way he's going to figure it out. I saw a picture uh, recently online of one of the famous Supercross guys trying flat track, and they all, all of those guys come to flat track and they look extremely bizarre on the bike. You know, they kind of get what I call dirt bike foot, where yeah. they've got their handlebars up and their foot is it's straight out. Years, you know, right? you know, is there something particularly bizarre about? proper flat track body position where you have to open your hips up and kind of get on top of the bike. What is, is it, it just seems like maybe that's a hard thing to do if you're not raised on it. So what's the real question here? Is there, is that question, why can't they do it? Or is that question is, is there something else they should be doing? No, I think the question, question is, 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 is there, is there something about you know, every like like road race style where you're off to the inside yeah, and I get you the know, question. It, you know, I'm just asking. I want to clarify because the first question was why can't they do it? Mm -hmm. So are we still on that question? Sure. Or we're on body position because if it's the first question, which why can't they do it? It's and I can say, let's say I'm the trainer and you're the rider and you're just coming in, right? So you come in, flip up your shield. And I'm going to talk to you. What the hell? I told you 15 freaking times. Leg out. Leg out. Leg out. How many times am I going to tell you? My leg is out. You no, know it's not. It's like this. <laughs> this is leg out. Leg out. Go. <laughs> Two seconds later, you pit again. What do you think happens when you pit again? 
My leg is out. It's not. <laughs> this is out. This isn't out. This is out. Go. And for 40 minutes, we go through this drill, yeah. right? Till finally you get your leg, your knee locked in. And once you do it once, you're like, oh, that does help. Weight distribution. That's what they're trying to do. They're trying to get the weight over. So you don't have to pull the, the weights pulling the motorcycles. You don't have to do it with the bars. It's load, right? Hmm. So you don't lose load. So he's got a reason for leg out. But he's been screamed at since he was seven. Leg out, leg out, leg out. Now you're telling him, no, dude, you don't want to do that. You want to, you want to put your leg on the ground and have it be lazy. It should just be sitting there, not really doing much. It's just kind of a counterbalance. And in his head, he's like, what? What? If I do that, I'm going to get screamed at. My father's <laughs> going to come out of the grave. My personal father is going to come out of the grave and freaking scream at me if he sees me missing Apex, right? Yeah. That shit's still going on in my head. So, so you don't think there's anything uniquely difficult or bizarre about flat track body position. It's just when those high-level riders are so good at what they do, it's just ingrained. It's just ingrained in us, right? We do. I go trail riding, and I and it's certain things because I'm old and I've been having back problems. We ride the other day, and my son says to me, Dad, I can't believe how fast you're going. And I'm like, what? Are you picking up me? He's like, no, no, no. He said, you're sitting down. You, you, I could barely go through that rock crap section standing up, and you're sitting down. You're driving away from me. And I'm like, yeah, but I'm letting it do what it needs to do. I'm kind of road racing up through this section. It's beating me up. But less than if I, I just, I don't have the physical strength to stand up. Yeah, when well, you get to a certain level of riding, you can, you can ride wrong well if you're if well, you got a lot of background. Yeah. So to answer your second question, yes, body position on the motorcycle, back to what are you really doing, is, is everything that, that you want to be when you open up. I mean, you want to be stepping out. You want your core looking that way. You want all that weight going down through the tire. You want the motorcycle under you, so the seat's over here someplace, and it's under you, so you're pushing straight down on the motorcycle, right? Mm -hmm. And then the foot is, depending on how you flex and what you can do, yeah. I notice when I look at pictures, because I don't like losing the front end, I notice that I have my foot toe forward and my, my leg is going straight down. So that's why I'm hitting the handlebar, because my leg's in the wrong place. I need to turn my foot sideways, yeah. but I don't trust myself because I don't like that front end. Feeling, Easier said right? than done. Yeah. It, and for 20 years, I've been road racing. I'm supposed to have my foot on the foot peg. My knee is <laughs> supposed to be on the ground, right? Yeah. What's that I can do? So it, it's, yes, body position matters. Fun. fun. You know, we've talked about this, I think, once before. Let's, let's go back again. Like uh, when, when I met you, for instance. Right. Um, he, he came over and introduced himself, and uh, I'm like, yeah, I know who you are. <laughs> And uh, clearly wanted to, seemed like he wanted me to help him. So I watched him ride. And the first thing that I did, I took a roll of duct tape and a couple of red shop right. rags. Right. Because, you know, he stuck him on the seat. Stuck him on the seat. So you could not get, sit back on the motorcycle. It's like, you're, you're going way too fast. And you're actually going to tuck the front tire coming out of the corner. You're sitting fo so far back. And I think you actually yeah. did. Right. Uh, yeah. I spun out in the middle of the street, <laughs> finally. Yeah, so so um, maybe that's 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 a good answer. The a better answer than I could have come up with is, it's uh, it's not that bizarre. It's just bizarre when you've ridden at that level for that long. It's just it, it's you, what are you doing, right? I, I watched I watched this gentleman. There was two of them actually. One was at Bobber, and this gentleman weighed four hundred and fifty pounds. I'm not kidding either. He was past 300 pounds. Then I met, I met, maybe not 450, but he was past 300. This guy was huge, right? Wow. And this guy was freaking flying. He was like third on the racetrack, fourth on the racetrack. And I was freaking rooting this guy on 100% because he's big and 100% admit it. I was rooting this guy on up in the stand screaming, even though I know he can't hear me. <laughs> the, go, go, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. And I actually went and talked to the guy afterwards and tried to help him ride and fix a couple of issues he had because he was doing everything exactly like he needed to be doing it. Even though he was, I mean, this, this guy was huge. He would get up off the seat, get himself all set before he ever got to the turn. So he had plenty of time to get it stopped, down gear it and get it laid over. And then when he'd get it laid over, 
If it was an instant right, he'd pick his ass up, push the motorcycle down, sit back down, then pick the motorcycle up and over. So he was already on the other side of the mm. seat. So he didn't have to move in between turns because he was so big, he'd get it so upset. Yeah. And the guy was freaking flying. And there was a guy dirt tracking the other week, the exact same thing. And both of them, I went on, I talked to him. And what I was trying to get both of them to do was they were both undersprung still, even though they had adjusted for their rate. They're off the chart. Nobody knows what that is. And I was trying to convince them that I don't care what anybody says. I've got, open my wallet, $600 with me. I'll bet you 600 bucks. If you go up another three sizes in spring, your whole world will wake up. I'm willing to bet to, to prove it. Be good to follow up and see it works. Right. Um, well, I usually bet because I know I'm right. <laughs> um, so keep that in mind if you ever bet me. Um, but they both listened, uh, but they couldn't do anything about it there because they didn't have, yeah. you know, even if you go borrow something, that was, they were out of everybody's range. All right, that's a good answer to that question. Let's cut it off. Maybe we'll do one more.